Welcome to video number 32 in the Marine Invertebrate Biology series, second to last video, and uh, the only video for phylum Tenophora, which are comb bearers, sometimes called comb jellies, uh, sometimes called sea gooseberries. And this is the, a nice image of what you're often going to see when you're sitting on your safety stop. And you'll see lots of these things floating by with the most beautiful rainbow colors, uh, which will be a, a quite amazing. Really, the whole point of this course is not to know every species that you see. You're never going to do that. That's impossible. Uh, but you can get familiar with what all of the things are that you see in terms of their larger taxonomic group, their place in the ecology, how they go about making their um, their uh, life, what they prey on, what they are being preyed on, and that tells you about something about the health of the ecology. So I want you to be just have a, a basic familiarity with all of these organisms. And these are things that you're going to see very often when you're sitting on your dives. Okay, so they come in lots of different varieties. There's an old, uh, um, old drawings of uh, some tenophores, and uh, the picture on the right is a more modern picture. They tend to be gelatinous. They're not jellyfish, but uh, people will mistake them for jellyfish. But when you see them. Um, and in action, you'll see why they're not jellyfish. Uh, some of them are, they're mostly these little balls, but some of them can be a uh, ribbon tenophores, uh, like this one that's kind of curled up. It'll look like this in its longer form. You occasionally see ribbon tenophores, much less common than the, uh, than the sort of um, oval-shaped ones. Uh, some of them will be trailing tentacles. And some will be not will not be trailing tentacles. Uh, some of them are um, in this bilobate kind of symmetry, much like a um, barbell. They can sort of open up and then wave their uh, prey capture arms around. Uh, and there are a very few of them that are benthic, so uh, they'll. Be different in the in the than the um, platyhelminthes. You might uh, mistake these for thinking they're a flatworm, but they have these two lobes, okay, and they are, uh, which is where flatworms will um, are bilaterally symmetrical with the uh, with a single sort of head unit with the two eye spots, and uh, these ones have a little bit different shape, but they are small. They tend to be negatively phototaxic seen at night, mostly on uh, coral, so we don't see a lot of these around. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean they're not here. They're just small and um, and fairly obscure. Uh, here's something, one that you could definitely mistake for a um, platyhelminthes, a flatworm, but it is a uh, benthic comb jellyfish. Most of the ones that you're going to see are going to be all planktonic. Another uh, benthic uh, plant, uh, comb jelly with these two lobes. Okay, so what are the general characteristics of tenophores? They are biradially symmetrical. So that is very much like we were talking about with the barbell. Uh, it's got two radial, radially symmetrical ends attached in the middle. Um, and so if you the two ends should be symmetrical to each other, and they are both radially symmetrical. So that's called biradially symmetrical. You just think of a hand barbell will give you the, the general symmetry. Uh, they have eight rows of cilia, okay, these combs. So uh, each one of them is sort of like a whole lot of cilia um, all fused together. And so it makes a sort of a unit like so, and then that can flap uh, back and forth, and um, that can flap it back and forth and be and that is used for propulsion. And these are the largest animals that swim by using cilia. The largest animals that move by using cilia 
are the Nemertians, which uh, can be very, very long and have ciliated skin. All right, so the, the cilia beat on their body, they beat in sequence, and that propels in the uh, animal through the water. And uh, this is something that is the probably the main feature of these uh, animals when you're observing them are these beautiful, stunning rainbow patterns that come um, from the refraction of light through the cilia. Now, uh, this is a good time to go to stop the video and go and watch the YouTube links that I've provided on Moodle or the lesson plan and uh, see what these things look like. You may have already seen them if you've been diving and uh, be familiar with them and, and go, ah, have a moment of recognition. Oh, that's what I was looking at. Uh, so if they have tentacles, they come from near the aboral pole, all right? And they are um, sticky, but very much like a jellyfish um, tentacle, but they don't have uh, nidocytes. They don't have nematocysts, uh, stinging cells. They just are sticky. It's like flypaper or something like that, where they um, flick them through the water and try to catch anything that will stick to them. And then they pass that to the cross, across the mouth and digest whatever's uh, up to the tentacle. Um, some of them uh, just gulp. So they have this big open opening at one end and the cilia rows along there um, will they can swim forward and just gulp other things and mostly they eat other tenophores so they are um, they can be cannibalistic or eat other species but they are uh, sort of like they'll, they, there's no real brain or anything they just uh, when they encounter uh, some something that they think they can eat they just uh, try to engulf it And there is a video uh, link to that on the Moodle page. All right, so taxonomy that you're responsible for, which you're responsible. There are two classes, tentaculata and nuda. All right, I think you can guess the difference. The ones with tentacles are tentacle, tentaculata, and nuda are the ones without tentacles. And that is the end of the Tinafore video.